Now, for most planes, I usually start out with building the cockpit first. So, in this case, for this kit, we got the aftermarket um, photo etch uh, pieces here. And um, go ahead and cut this stuff out. We got this uh, E4 clip here. We'll cut this out, and I'll show you really quick how I do it, and I'll just do the rest. Take a scissors instead of, 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 of the um, Zacto knife here. And what I would do is clip it, leaving leaving some of the sprue parts sticking out because it's better to ha leave the sprue parts the sprueing uh, sticking out that you could sand down and cut later rather than uh, messing up and having uh, it divoted in and then you lose that part of the uh, sprue and then you have to sand it up or, um, or fill it up so okay here's one of the parts so I'll go ahead and cut out the rest of it okay we got all the pieces cut out here now we're just going to go ahead and shave off the extra sprues that are just coming out too high. It's better with, you know, to do it when it's off the sprue pieces here. You don't make any mistakes. Now that we got all the parts all ready to be <laughs> put together or painted, in this case we're putting on some aftermarket uh, photo etch stuff. So we had to really look at um, the instructions for the photo etch stuff which is uh, so and so and the uh, instructions on putting the actual cockpit together now we have to take a look here at some of the ways that um, the photo etch stuff will go onto the parts uh, for example the seats here the seat belts will go over the top of the seat um, gonna have to clear up or to grind down the uh, the uh, the panel here before we put on the uh, photo etch. Some of the petals I'm gonna put on some photo etch, and the details on this console here. There's gonna be a lot of things that we're gonna have to cut out, ground down, and stuff like that. So I guess we are not going to put those together first. Look at the instructions here. First thing we're going to do is take A16, which is this part here. Go ahead and grind down this area and this area. Take some heavy grit sandpaper here and slowly sand down these instrument panels here. Smooth it out. Now, sometimes when you're sanding this down, you're going to overlay. Um, photo etch stuff on top of it you gotta know how much to really grind down it's probably almost down to the T here because you know the way it's gonna be done is I'm gonna take these two here and put them on top of each other on top of the dash and the controls and then it'll be pretty thick so I'm gonna have to really grind that down a bit almost down to the wire not too much though because we don't want to lose the complete thing here and then, uh, yeah, that's uh, just use your best uh, judgment on that. Okay, we got it uh, shaved down. Now, whether or not it's you know flat or flush is another question, but uh, you know, best you can do. Okay, so grind it down a couple of millimeters there, so that the uh, photo etch uh, metal parts will stack up about right. Okay, now let's see what else we have here. We're gonna have to put photo etch pieces into the pedals here, no big deal. Here, E11, we are going to have to look like cut this up. Ooh, nice. These pedals here will be replaced by photo etch stuff right here. What I am going to do is cut those off, so let's. Alright. Easy teasy, there we go. Just leave enough, there you go, you snip them off. Now what we're gonna do is just sand them down flush. So just uh, sand them down. A little here, no big deal. Just get it flush because it's a little conclave here if you notice. Now when working this part you gotta be very careful here because this piece can actually break off. So just a little warning there. And you just get it um, sand it down flush. Just enough so that the photo etch go on, you can't uh, barely tell once that happens. Now they want us to do a lot with the side panels here. 
Looks like we want to get rid of, uh, let's see, part here, the big part down here on the side, hopefully I'll mess anything up and do it this way. Alright, that's fine. Okay. We'll fix that up after we get it off. Okay, and then, uh, looks like we gotta take out these on top of here. Sand that down in a bit. And then what else? Okay, and we'll ground out this panel here. On this side, we gotta take this thing off. Right here. We gotta smooth out all the areas. It's supposed to be smoothed out, all smoothed out. Gotta use a Zacto knife to cut some of the parts out, but we got it. We got enough here to paint it and then put on the photo etch parts later. Okay, so let's uh, prep this for painting. What I usually do is just take what I hear stock cards, but I take I have magic cards, common ones. I have stacks of them from my magic playing days. So what I do is just take a couple of these, stick it onto the cards like this, make a sticky backing. Stick this on there, stick this on there, and then stick this like that. The whole thing. All the way down like that. There we go. Put the chair on. This is sticking on. Stick on the other pieces. Make sure. This is going to be a little tricky. But, there you go. Stick right on there. I'm not even sure we're using this anymore, but just in case. Alright, there we go. So let's go ahead and what we'll do is use Tamiya's Cockpit Green XF71. Alright. Go ahead and get some of the lacquer thinner here, even though it's acrylic. Actually, does help it bite a little bit more if you use lacquer thinner. In this case, we will get it to about maybe 30% um, paint, the rest uh, thinner here. So let's go ahead and try that. And you wanted the consistency of skim milk. A lot of people always say. Unfortunately, I don't drink milk, so no clue what skim milk looks like, let alone milk. I mean, I've seen it before, but it's not like I'm an expert at what becomes the consistency of skim milk. Okay, so let's go ahead and make some of this up. Hopefully, we get to see some of that here. And uh, just do a test. I rub it up against the uh, areas where there's no paint on the cup, and just watch it, uh, you know, flow back down, leaving sort of a the color of it left behind, the milky color of it, and then it, you know, slowly clears up. That's about the consistency, I think, what they mean by skin milk, but whatever. Okay, that looks good. A while you get you pretty used to it. Grab the airbrush here, turn it on. I am going to set it so the pressure is about 20 psi. So I really don't want to blow this off of the cards and everything. So let's go ahead and do a few passes on it, thin passes. Whoa. This is why I hate. Airbrushes with cups like this because I tend to move it a lot and it spills out. Get a coaching here, let it run through once. Ah! That's why sometimes I hate this. No big deal, we'll do it with the uh. Tweezers here. Yeah. 
I have to actually get the sides anyways with the seat. Air onto it, let's dry a little. Put more paint on it. It's one way you can do it to make it go a little faster. Let's gonna go over and give it another coating. And looks pretty good. Uh, side walls here just in case. Another coating on these pieces here. What we're going to go ahead here is while we're at it, we'll take the fuselage pieces here on the sprues. Let's go ahead and give it a spray. Now, there's something we're supposed to do with the uh, photo etch part. I think right here. I will worry about it later. I like can't paint it again. Now, in the earlier planes, this is really more yellowish, the uh, interior color, yellowish green tinge. And then later on, they used the uh, for the Corsair for you a dash one A's. They used and went cockpit green. So whether it's cockpit green or more of a yellow tinge green, it still works. Okay, let's, let's go and double check everything here. Let's go put the seat down there. Like that. How that works. Pick this up. Now, some of you know that I didn't mention about washing the parts here. Uh, normally, everyone says it's a good idea to do it. Sometimes I do. It depends on how the sprues are when you know they get boxed and stuff. But to me, I noticed though, there is not much of any weird oils or anything on these sprues. Very clean. That's one thing I like about to me. They come with very clean fitting parts, so I usually don't have to worry about it when I'm messing with Tamiya stuff. So there you go. Let's go ahead and let everything else here dry. So we've got a good coating of cockpit green everywhere. Look at this. Push that up. Alright. That looks good. So we got the paint down. So this is what I usually do to clean my airbrush. This is a mix of 50-50 alcohol, 91%, and uh, Windex. 50-50 mix there. So what I do first really quick is to go ahead and fill the cup up with this mix. Turn it all the way up. Spray it in not too close to the camera here. There is mist that comes out. Alright, let it run through its course. Take it, the cup off. I'm going to run it through again. But this time just Putting it through the airbrush like this, clean. Okay. Cool. And then what I do is go ahead and run it through regular alcohol. Just straight up alcohol mix. And this pretty much cleans the airbrush takes out any paint or anything that was still there, anything that was clogged up on the tip. Go ahead and uh, clean it anyways. And there, now it's ready for the next color.